you have time to think about it. Yes. My real goal was to do something. Hi, this is Brian Forrester and I've been pursuing the phenomenon of elongated skulls and cranial deformation of humans for about eight years, mainly because there seem to be no academics whatsoever that are studying this ph uh, phenomenon, which I found completely bizarre. I was sent photographs about three years ago of a very huge elongated skull located in an obscure little museum in a village called Patapatani somewhere on the shore of Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. And earlier this year I was able to finally get there with Antonio Portugal, a famous author from B Bolivia. And so this is us returning to this site once again, this time with an American neurologist. And so I think you'll find his views and opinions quite intriguing as we explore on the Altiplano of Bolivia. Thank you so much for watching my videos. This is beautiful Lake Titicaca on the Bolivian side. And we're at a tiny village called Patapatani. And the reason why we're here is that there are two humanoid skeletons that we're going to inspect with a neurologist from the United States. These, uh, these two skeletons are very anomalous, especially the skulls, which you shall see. On a previous trip here, we had a radiologist from the United States called Ken who looked at these two specimens, both the fetus skeleton and the, what he described as a young woman skeleton, and after careful consideration, he believed, and still believes, that they were mother and baby. The baby died in the womb at seven to nine months gestation, but both, he believes, died during childbirth. The amazing thing is that the baby has an elongated skull, or I should say the fetus has an elongated skull, which you will see is the size of the torso. And the size of the skull of the young woman is exceptionally large, and Ken said this is not an example of cranial deformation or head binding or cradle boarding. This individual, and in fact both, were and would have been born with this condition. So here we have the baby, or the fetus. As you can see, its skull is the size of its torso. This is not hydrocephaly. This, and we'll discuss this with the doctor, seems to be some kind of genetic anomaly. And now here we have the tani, so-called tani skeleton. According to radiologist Ken, this was a young woman who died between 8 and 12 years old. And, but we do have Dr. Dave here. And doctor, can you give us some insights into what you're looking at? Well, it looks to me like he does have the uh, coronal sutures on both sides. It, I think he does have a, a, a sagittal suture here has been pushed back, but he doesn't have a metopic suture. That's what he's missing uh -huh. in the frontal area. And is that an irregularity? It can be. We see it from time to time in, in, in regular humans. And how about the shape of the skull? Do you think this is the result of head binding? I can't, uh, I can't say for sure. Um, it, it looks like it is.
But I can see the side show suture up there. You've got your camera on it now. Uh -huh. And behind that are the um, lambdoid sutures. So, Dr. Dave, you are a neurologist. Correct. And what uh, observations uh, have you made as regards the two specimens that you just saw? Well, the most one that's fascinating to me is the infant, the child. I mean, this baby was born with an elongated skull, obviously. It is obviously not the product of obstructive hydrocephalus. The morphology of the shape of the skull is not consistent with that diagnosis. So clearly this baby was born that way, which makes it very interesting indeed. So there you have it. So far we've made two trips to this little museum at Patapatani. Each time we've had a physician with us from the United States and both of them concur that the baby would have been born with an elongated skull. So that is a genetic variation to say the least. Um, Ken, the radiologist who was here about six months ago with us, declared that what he was looking at was not the result of some kind of disease. In fact, he stated, this is not a human being. And I said, do you mean this is not Homo sapiens sapiens? And he said, that is correct. This is, at the minimum, a subspecies of, of humanity. And at the extreme, possibly a different genus. But at least now, we found one clear example of a being that would have been born with an elongated skull here at Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. I have 900 more videos you can watch on my YouTube channel and my website www.hiddenincatours.com. And we're very fortunate to be with Antonio Portugal who was the man, the researcher, the author in Bolivia who helped us to find this museum in the first place. Yes, I'm very glad to be with you again, uh, Brian, and the people who visit us, and to get in this project, which one will grow very much, because we're talking about something unique in this planet. I hope we're going to be still working with you, Brian, and the team who's going to be here, and let the humanity know that in Bolivia, in the Lake Titicaca, we got something fabulous and thank you very much.